Hello, I'm Amy Luby, and I head up IT channel evangelism here at Acronis. Acronis sets the standard for cyber protection, combining data protection and cybersecurity, and our solutions are trusted by over 50,000 IT solution providers around the world. As for me, I've been in the channel over 25 years. The first half of that period, I was an MSP, uh, and then I became one of the first master MSPs in the channel. Since then, um, the last decade or so, I have spent my time helping organizations like Acronis engage the global channel community. Uh, I'm here today with Larry Walsh, CEO of the 2112 Group. Larry is also well known in the global channel. And so Larry, I'd like you to maybe take a minute and tell us about yourself in 2112. Well, I'm glad to hear you say well known in the in the global channel because usually it's it's infamous in the global channel. But I, I'll take well known for a change for a good change. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. So, thank, Amy, it's great to be here with you, uh, and and also the great to be part of the Acronis community because it's a it's a truly tremendous company with some great products. So I'm glad to be associated with you on this. Um, yeah, so as Amy said, I'm the founder and the CEO of 2112. We do research and strategy work for vendors and helping them understand how to better relate with their partners in their go-to-market strategies. And we we live in we live and breathe in trying to use in true intelligence and data on how to make the channel be a better place for everyone, make them more productive. That's great. I'm so happy to talk to you today, Larry. I know you were so busy. Um, you, <laughs> I know you are. You've been on the phone all day. Um, yeah. But you know what? You just published your COVID-19 impact on the channel report yeah. uh, this morning. Um, it was a great report, uh, a lot of good research. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, who was involved in that, um, who was surveyed, and then, you know, your key takeaways from, from what you found out? Well, first, let's just uh, let me just say that this is the first of a series of research reports that we're gearing up for. Um, we're actually currently in the field with the second survey related to the COVID pan uh, pandemic. Uh, this one was geared towards channel chiefs, and uh, what we define as a channel chief is where you'll see us use terms channel chief, channel professional, basically director level and above, anyone who's the, who deals with channel sales, channel marketing. Uh, channel strategy or just the overall channel operations. Um, we, 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 you know, these are the people that we typically associate with in our engagements and are the people who make channel programs run. We wanted through this survey to capture a snapshot of what was happening in the moment that the crisis was first hitting. Um, and we thought it was critical to do this because we wanted to see what the perceptions were and what the outlook was uh, at the height of where, of the uncertainty. And if you think about this, you know, I, I can't tell you how many conversations I'm have had over the past several weeks in which we talk about um, Corona time, which is the days feel like weeks because there's yeah. so much happening and we are reacting to so many, so many changes happening simultaneously. And when we had the survey in the field for three days, just a week ago, we were literally measuring things changing by the hour and we wanted to see what was happening. And that's the thing that really comes out in this, in this report is that we have a, a, a glimmer of even amid all of this uncertainty in all of this, uh, I, I, I dare I say fear, there's hope. And that's really what we wanted to convey. Oh, that's perfect. So it's really a snapshot um, and then will this next survey, is that the same group or, or is it going to have a little bit of a different spin on it? No, we're actually leapfrogging. Um, so the first one was the channel chiefs because we needed to know what they were thinking. Um, and remember 2112s, we work on behalf of vendors to help partners and help partners relate to vendors. So we wanted to know what was happening with the vendors first. Um, we, the next the survey that we have in the field currently is we're we're uh querying solution providers msps integrators trying to figure out what's happening with them we have a lot of anecdotal uh feedback from that from the partner community already on what they're feeling um and i can tell you just in conversations i've had over the last week and a half that confidence is shifting it's maybe actually i should say it's fluid 
Um, yeah. But now we're trying to get a measure of actually what's happening because I think that what happens with the with the partners is is vastly different than what happens with vendors. Vendors have a different construct. The partners need to have a little bit more experience before they can actually form perceptions. And this is why we're in the field now. I get it. I get it. Um, I, I've spent a lot of time talking to partners too over the last couple of weeks or, or really intensely in the last week and a half. Um, and now that they're starting to fin, and I'm not going to say finish, but they're, they're, they spend a bulk of their time in the last week or so getting their clients rem working remotely, getting all that set up. And now they're kind of settling into how, how am I going to survive this disruption? And we'll just call it a disruption. Yeah. Um, you know, how can I manage my cash? How can I manage, you know, what if my clients start to have troubles and they can't pay their bills? What am I going to do? And you actually talk about that in your survey yeah. um, about the immediate disruptions. And it looks like the channel chiefs are saying something very similar. There's a disruption in cash flow. Look like that was the top. Can you kind of tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So the number one immediate number one disruption that the vendors are um, experiencing is cancellation of orders and interruptions of cash flow, or we call it slow paying. Is they're beginning to already see the effects of this. Now, part of this is due to. Uh, Part of this is due to supply chain disruptions because a lot of hardware that is that is sold through the channel here in North America and Europe is actually manufactured in China, and China was already in their social distancing and lockdown situations prior to all of us. So we're already feeling a supply chain crunch coming into our the impact of COVID nineteen in North America and Western Europe. Right, um, but. In addition to that, though, there's there's a few other things that are going on out there. Um, there's an expectation that there's going to be some shorting of contracts. There's going to be we've already heard from some of those MSPs that there's been some some of their weaker accounts have to canceled their contracts or been trying to get out of them, uh, and we know that that's going to ripple up chain. Uh, even prior to all of this happening, we were monitoring a situation that was not getting, you know, it was talked about in the background, but wasn't really bubbling to the surface, is that there was a bubble forming within the services um, economy, that the vendors that were, uh, the vend you know, there are several, I don't know exactly how many, but we identified a few vendors that were imposing long-term services contracts with non-transferable licenses or, right. you know, uh, un inflexible minimums onto the partners, but the partners could only sell their services on an annual basis or desk month to month. And it was creating a disconnect within the channel. And we had actually issued a warning prior to all this that there was a, a potential for a bubble bursting that would have an impact on recurring revenue. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, that were theory really, I hate to even say this, we would like to say a year ago, there were theory just two weeks ago that is now becoming a reality. Wow, isn't that it's crazy? Um, yeah, yeah. What's happened, really? Um, you know, I'm I'm especially fascinated with your number seventeen slide. Your partners that will provide the most value. Yeah. Um, it, it, your your research coming into twenty twenty um, noted that VARs were were kind of having a resurgence or or a little bit um, more focus, and you can see very clearly the flip with this current survey um, has gone back to MSPs. What yeah. what do you think's going on there? So coming into 2020, so every year 2112 starts the year with two reports. We do our Challenge Chief Outlook report and our channel forecast report. The Challenge Chief Outlook is what the vendors are expecting to happen within the year and channel uh, forecast is what the partners are gonna uh, expecting for the year. And they are very much in lockstep. Um, mm -hmm. We see similar things in both reports would tell us, and okay, this is where there's alignment, this is where there's disconnects. Um, but this year, both reports came in with a high degree of confidence that we were going to have a good 2020. So mm -hmm. January, February, and remember everybody, in thinking about this, is that Q1, even with everything that's happened over the past two weeks, most companies are going to post a good Q1 which right. is the irony of all of this, right? 
So we were coming into 2020 with a, with a high degree of confidence, but one of the things that we noted was is that vendors were changing their perception on value of partners by type. And over the past several years, vendors were looking at MSP as the most valuable partners because they were trying to attach their recurring revenues uh, or get their recurring revenues up to market and they were looking at MSPs as being the most likely candidates to help them build their recurring revenue. Okay. And that flipped at the beginning of the year because and we saw a resurgence in the perceived value of VARs and it's because vendors were no longer, many vendors are not looking at services as a sell Two, where they sell a service to the partner and the partner then resells it to the customer. So there's an independent chain of value. Mm -hmm. What the vendors were seeing, it, what the vendors are now eyeing at least at the beginning of the year was that they would sell through VARs, compensate VARs once and retain the recurring revenue for themselves. And again, if you go back to what we were just talking about on the bubble forming, that's part of that trend because the street, Wall Street, really loves that predictable recurring revenue. Private equity firms love that rec uh, recurring predictable revenue on the equity value of their investments. So right. as much of the value that the vendors could retain, the better off they were, and they could do that better through a traditional resale model than they could through a, a shared revenue model with MSPs. And I think that that's, but we get into this situation and all of a sudden you get 80% of the workforce at, you know, operating out of their homes, who's in the best position to facilitate that immediate shock transition? And that's MSPs. And I think that that's what they're seeing, that they, they need that, that distributed support and they're going to need it for the foreseeable future. Right. And that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. And yeah, that's exactly what MSPs have been doing for the last couple of weeks is doing yeah. all of that conversion, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. You think about this is that during... It, it, this was in think about it we are a week into this time last week new york where i'm i'm based out of long island new york i can see manhattan from my house we weren't even on lockdown we were on just keep your distance from people right and by by friday we we're at 75 percent of workforce staying home saturday we we're at 100 percent, and everything just came to a stop so this is just a week a week long at this point and in that time, we had to transition 100% of the tri-state area, one of the most densely populated areas of the country, 19 to 22 million people to go from commuting into Manhattan to work from home. Stand that is home. absolutely astounding. That's fascinating. Um, and, and quite resilient if you think about it um, yeah. from any perspective. Um, but if you... you uh, think about it just from a channel perspective, uh, how resilient we are at the moment uh, and how we've been able to respond um, at a moment's notice when things are literally shifting. I think you used the term fluid. I, I mean, yeah. it is. It's, it's, it's just um, changing every moment. So, well, well uh, let, me, let me just add something because I think it's germane <laughs> to a Cronus Partners in particular is that 10 days ago when us in the technology world in in the channel when we talked about backup we were talking about data and systems we would go to server level to file level um today we have to start thinking about backup as people and this has been a rude awakening to a lot of companies that didn't have to think about you know their their biggest concern was am i backing up this resource properly do i have a good known um uh do i have a good known point in time backup to this data now we have to know how to back up you know bob and bob and alice and right we never thought about that before right and, and how to protect that and make sure that it's it's consistently clean and available. Oh, yeah, without our a doubt, yeah. Of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Our partners um, have been particularly poised to to do exactly that um, yeah. with the Acronis platform. So that's that's been pretty interesting. So, you know, I know, I know you're really busy. Let's talk about... Um, uh, you oh, know, I'm never, I'm never too busy for you, Amy. I know, I know, I was, and I appreciate that uh, so very much. So um, later on in your survey, you talked about 
um, live events and recovery plans um, yeah. for the channel after the pandemic. So, I mean, every event has been canceled. Um, we probably won't see them come back as far as live events. Uh, who knows, but at least not in the next month or so. Um, but what was interesting to me was um, on your other slide regarding pandemic recovery, the number one thing that channel chiefs reported was that they plan to go back to live events. Um, but the second one was uh, reliance on marketing and yeah. a lot of them are looking at partner programs and incentives and things like that. So do you think, um, you know, leading up till now, uh, if you're a channel chief, you are a frequent flyer, you are living out of hotels, living out of your suitcase, you're speaking, you're seeing partners one-on-one, -on -one, face to face all the time. Um, that's essentially the job description. Do you think you're gonna we're gonna see a permanent shift, if you will, to relying on digital and uh, virtual type events? or maybe a more normalization uh, where uh, it's more half and half. What, what do you think is going to happen with that? Well, first, let me tell you a story. Um, if you ever come to my house, uh, well, if you came to my house a couple of weeks ago, I would have told you that I have ghosts because somebody does laundry, somebody stocks my, you know, my, my refrigerator <laughs> food, my house is clean and I never knew, knew how. And, being at home now because I, amy i'm like that i if i'm right. flying things are well right i've discovered that there's a person who lives in my home um she says she's my wife we're getting to know each other she seems really nice and I, i'm really happy to say that i'm not not traveling is making me appreciate home in a way that I haven't in a while, and which is a good thing. And of course, I'm being facetious about this because there's many jokes out there about people rediscovering their families. Right. Um, also about divorce rates for those countries that are coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know we'll get, we'll <laughs> get into that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, this is where I, I think, look, as I said, our research that we published is a snapshot in time. It is subject to change. Uh, and we fully anticipate it changing as we continue to collect more data. And that's the entire point of it. We needed this new starting point because all of our baselines from the beginning of the year were no longer valid. Right. So we had to figure out what we needed a new place to start from, which is why we put this research in the field. I'm also of the mind that uh, we don't know what's going to happen now. I, as much as I say that beyond the curve, there is goodness, there is growth, there will be happier times and we will be better than we were before. I fully anticipate that there's going to be dramatic changes in the technology landscape based on what we learn from this experience, that we're going to have, for instance, a uh, embracing of distributed workforces and work from home, that we will rethink education, that we will rethink unified communication and collaboration, or at least fully embrace these tools. These are things exactly. that those are, those are kind of simple. Mm -hmm. um, the other things we don't know yet. I anticipate, not certain, but I anticipate that um, marketers, channel chiefs, channel program managers, they're going to, through this experience, discover that they don't need some of the standbys that they've relied on for many years, like live events. And that we may find that they I don't think live events are gonna go away. I don't think that we are going to all suddenly rush into huddle rooms and only do video. I mean, the, 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 the Zoom cocktail parties are fun, mm -hmm. but you know, we all need human contact. I mean, we, you know, human beings are social animals and salespeople actually don't know what to do with somebody unless they can actually reach out and touch them. Right. So there's going to be some change, just what that change is. We don't know yet. So it's not surprising to see them say that they are going to rush back into it. Now, what I will say is this, um, as this morning, when, as we're recording this, uh, this morning, Microsoft announced, or actually probably yesterday, uh, there again, such a, today was a long week. Um, but Microsoft announced that they've canceled, um, Ignite 
uh, right. with, in July, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest channel events in the world every year. And now they're probably going to put it in a virtual platform or something. You've seen some, some events trying to get pushed until the fall or just canceled and postponed until the following year. Let's just assume that the live event stuff picks up again in the second half august through november or so right there's going to be so much competition for mind share and for uh for travel and i've heard people say that um people are going to be aching to get out and have human contact that, they, that these events will be flooded and i have no doubt that that's true but there's only so many events that we can go to right and i think that that will be the secondary impact will will really test the true value of live events again. Right. I, uh, I agree. I, I think, well, having grown up around the channel um, and the reliance on the live events and the massive budgets that require um, to show up at those events, it seemed to me like there, there needed to be some sort of correction there. Now, yeah. whether we needed COVID to do that or not, you know, I, 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 I would hope for a different way, that. but yeah, yeah. Right. But, um, I, I think, you know, being able to spend some time at home, I know I had a, a personal health crisis a number of years ago, which forced me to stay home, you know, out of the whole thing. Um, and you know, you, you gain a different perspective when you start thinking about, um, you know, this could impact my family, you know, things have changed. You don't really go back to normal after an event like this. You go back to some kind of new normal, but yeah. not necessarily everything that you did the day before. Um, so it all looks a little new. And I, I, I would think that, um, you know, events are important. As you said, we're social people. Um, but at some point, there's there's got to be a balance there for all of us. Well, look, this is... <sighs> I'm a, I was a journalist for 20 years. Uh, I'm, I'm a student of history. You know, when Amy says that we've been around the industry for a long time, you know, when Amy and I first met each other, I had a different color hair. Somehow she still has the same color. Um, <laughs> That's the magic but, of technology too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, these are great filters they have on Zoom. Right. Um, but and I say this, and I'm going to really geek out on people as a Trekkie, right here. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you is that the human condition, the human experience, is always forward. And yeah. so, there, no matter what happens next, it will not be backwards. You know, there is, you know, and, and people really need to start getting comfortable with that. Is that we're not going back to February in being the way that we were, we are going to be going forward into something that is going to be a new, a it will, people will call it a new normal, and that's going to sound strange and alien. It's not, it's going to be better. And I honestly believe all change is good. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's not painful. And God, you're right, Amy, we could have picked something less painful than the COVID pandemic. Right. But, but, but I do honestly believe that we will come out of this for the better. I do too, Larry. I, I think as a channel, um, we're resilient. Um, but, you know, all those relationships that we've been able to form over the years, they're, rela they're resilient too. We're, we're um, human and um, social at the core. Yeah, of and, course. And, and that'll continue no matter what, no, no. matter what. No, no, it has to. We have no choice. I mean, and here's the thing is that, and, you know, for your partners who are watching this, this is the advice that I've been giving to them. Uh, I'm actually giving a keynote tomorrow. It's funny, they signed me up for this keynote months ago. It was supposed to be about using gap analysis to identify growth opportunities, which is really, I mean, you talk about sexy stuff, but. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, but they said to me, they go, hey, you know, we can can you talk about surviving? And I'm just like, sure. Do you want to survive? Think like a virus. A virus does not survive if it kills its host. 
And if you if you think like that, then our top job, our number one job is if you want to protect your business, you want to protect your people, you want to keep everybody whole and you want to keep us all productive, your number one job is keeping your customer alive. Yes. And so what we as an industry truly have to do is that we have to figure out ways of helping our customers. And I guarantee it, I absolutely guarantee it that if we can help our customers survive this, they will be there for us on the other side. They absolutely will be. Um, the interesting thing uh, that you point out there, our um, CEO, Sergey, um, he likens it to, you know, the, the spiel you get when you're on a plane and before you take off and they tell you, you know, if you need oxygen, put it on your face first yeah. so it can help others. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's exactly it. If, if we can keep ourselves and our organizations intact, um, keep our employees intact, um, keep our clients intact, um, we're going to make it through. We're going to yeah. be good. Oh, and look, without a doubt, and I say this, I've talked with, I am talking with people around the world. I am in touch with every corner on every continent on a daily basis. And I can tell you that this is the most unifying global event that we have ever seen. I mean, uh, probably in the history of humanity, because we are at the point in time where we have the communications, the technology for true real-time global communications to where we can share our experiences. And everyone I talk to says the same thing. We're gonna get through this together. You know, on that note, I'm gonna say thank you. Um, oh. I really, really appreciate your time, Larry. Well, Amy, thanks Thanks for having me on. This is this is fun. This is a great way of, of oh, hey, look, that's me. I know. <laughs> I'm going to remind people that they can uh, get your full report um, yeah. at your website. So channelnomics.com, that's the full URL there. Um, and, and we also have some tools for our Cronus partners um, at acronus.com. Uh, so I want to thank you, Larry. Um, Thanks again. You know, stay true to yourself. I appreciate um, all that you give us uh, in the channel. So thank hey. you for that. Hey, look, you know what, I and Amy, I'll close on this and saying, uh, yeah, honestly, you and I have known each other for a long time. I, I tell people this from the bottom of my heart. If you're going to do something, do it because you love it. Don't do it because it's a job. And I do this. I do this because this is what I truly do. I want every, all of us to succeed. And I really do believe that we can do this together. I appreciate that. We can. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it so much. All right. Be well. Thank you. All right. You too.